Africa's population explosion. In 2050, the population of a certain world region is projected to reach almost 2.5 billion people. Where would you imagine? China? No. Perhaps India? No. Maybe Indonesia? Again? No. It's Africa. The population of Africa has been growing at an exponential rate and shows no sign of slowing down. This is especially prevalent in sub-Saharan countries. Africa will lead the world in population growth over the next 50 years. With approximately 1.2 billion people, Africa is rapidly catching up to population giants India and China. India's population is roughly 1.3 billion, and China has around 1.4 billion. While other regions' growth rates have been gradually slowing down, Africa's population continues to grow at around 2.5% per year. Four of the world's five countries with the fastest growing populations are in Africa. Niger, Angola, Benin, and Uganda. That's significant. India's population is growing at about 1%, Indonesia is at around 1.4%, and China is increasing at only 0.4%. The story of Africa's population explosion is remarkable. Before we look at why it has skyrocketed and what the consequences may be, let's go back to the mid-20th century. In 1950, the entire African population was just 177 million. In comparison, at the same time the population of the United States was 153 million, India was 360 million, and Japan had 83 million. Most nations in Africa were agrarian societies. Urbanization was low. Most countries had an urbanization level below 20%. Life was hard, particularly in sub-Saharan countries. The average life expectancy was 37 years old. People farmed the land, grew crops, and raised livestock in very trying conditions. While soil was fertile, the hot and humid conditions meant storage was difficult. Flies spread disease, sufficient irrigation was limited, and rain was often scarce. In the 1950s, the child mortality rate for these countries was about one in three. Naturally, families sought to have as many children as possible to compensate for losses and to help with the necessary labour. But then, slowly, things started to change. The first was a major breakthrough in healthcare. Improved medical services started to become more widely available. Gradually, urbanization started to grow, and people in cities had better access to medical facilities. Child mortality rates started to decrease. From 1950 to 2000, the population jumps were incredible. In 1955, Nigeria's population was 41 million. By 2000, it had tripled to 121 million. And by 2008, it had shot up to 150 million. This is all on the back of a steady 2.5% annual growth rate. Today, Nigeria's population of 206 million is projected to hit 400 million by 2050, which would make it the third most populous country on Earth. It wasn't only Nigeria that took off, though. In 1950, the Congo had 12 million people. By 1975, it had doubled to 25 million, and by 2000, had doubled again to reach 47 million. It's now doubled again to 89 million people. In 1980, Ethiopia had 35 million people. In 2000, it was 66 million and is currently 112 million. These population surges are unprecedented. It wasn't just improved medical services and economic demands that pushed the numbers up. There were several other major causes for the dramatic boom in population. Let's delve deeper. African societies have traditionally placed great value on large families. The concept of a joyous afterlife has meant a strong awareness of ancestors. This in turn means the continuation of the family name is crucial. In order to guarantee this, a large family is highly desirable. Having four to five children, therefore, not only demonstrates the future strength of the family, but is seen as a badge of honour, worthy of respect. It means a healthy and vibrant family network. 
Today in Africa, the average woman has about 4.7 children and can be over 5 in some countries. The average in other parts of the world is 2.2 or less, with a global average of around 2.5 children per woman. It's not just preserving the family name that leads to high fertility rates, though. Throughout the years, African women giving birth have tended to be younger on average than others around the world. The global average for women giving birth is about 26, but the African average is closer to 22. Why? Firstly, over time the trend has been for girls to drop out of school at a higher rate than boys. In poverty-stricken areas, girls are required to help out at home, while the boys are sent to complete their education. Culturally, early marriages are also common in most African societies, which are patriarchal in nature. Let's imagine, a girl marries in her teens and then dutifully starts having children, as per her husband's wishes. The large family is created, however her chances of completing education are severely restricted. In 2015, Nigeria had around 5.5 million girls out of school, while Ethiopia had more than a million. For these women, a lack of education simply means a lack of knowledge about family planning. This leads to higher birth rates amongst younger mothers. On top of that, family planning isn't overly encouraged amongst many traditional groups, especially if they're a Muslim society. Now that we understand what led to the African population boom, it's time to look at the ramifications. When sub-Saharan populations started to increase rapidly, governments became concerned, for good reason. They soon realised that it would be challenging to provide enough food, clean water and healthcare for the growing populations. On top of that, these countries were becoming more and more urbanised. They needed to improve infrastructure and services quickly. Better roads, hospitals and schools were essential. This has continued to the present day. New infrastructure has to be created at the rate of 2% to 4% per year just to maintain basic conditions. The problems of booming populations extended beyond the cities. More people resulted in overcultivation and overgrazing, soil degradation became an issue, and the lack of farmable land and low crop yields either drove people to cities or simply led to greater poverty. However, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Almost 60% of the African population is under 25, compared to America where just 6% of the people are under 25, or at the other extreme. Japan, where almost 40% of the population is over 60. Africa is the world's youngest continent. It points to a huge shift in economic trends for the future. For now, this brings many challenges to African countries, with the most important being to provide sufficient education and create a skilled workforce. When this is achieved, though, the implications are considerable. Country GDPs will rise, as will the GDP per capita, that is a given. With the increase in high school and college graduates comes the most critical development, the growth of the middle classes. When African middle classes inevitably grow, so too will the wealth of their countries. More sophisticated industries, more investment, and more economic clout. Finally, this will allow Africa the opportunity to wield more influence in the international community, including in the United Nations. Africa's population boom is unique in that it has been driven by cultural, societal, and economic factors. It has presented plenty of problems.